Gemini, it's me Stormy and here's your horoscope for October 2018. And Gemini, before we jump in, make sure you take advantage of the 2018 holiday gift, which is in the description box down below. So just click down there. It allows you to take advantage of appointments in October, November, December, and January. And actually I think just spots in December and January are open right now. So grab spots and let's go over all this big stuff that's coming up for you, all these sweet changes, okay? All right, Gemini, so this month, the big ticket item is that we have got Venus going retrograde. Now, whenever there's a retrograde, we're gonna look back. We're gonna move backwards, we're gonna reflect backwards, we're gonna go inward. All of these things that point to the past and going within are what is gonna be on the agenda. Now, this month, Venus is gonna be going retrograde first in the sign of Scorpio. At the end of the month, she'll slide back into the sign of Libra. So between your um, fifth and your sixth houses, so we're gonna look at work and routine and health. We're also going to look at some new beginnings and maybe even some things around children, romance, things like that. So let's jump in here. Let me break this month down for you so I can get you out exploring, experiencing it. And of course, I hope you share what's happening for you, what you're experiencing, what's coming to light for you during your month, okay? All right, so right here at the beginning of the month, um, on the 5th, we've got Venus taking her retrograde here in the sign of Scorpio. Now, this is going to light up and give energy to your 6th house. Now, the 6th house is the house of health, which I also include mental wellness in here. What you're thinking about up here, what's running around in your mind, is also going to translate down into your body. I know in previous months, Gemini and I have talked a lot about the head with you, things going on with your head, whether it be your thinking or you had an actual head injury or something like that. This is definitely a time where that mental wellness or that head wellness is also on the table along with body health, right? We could be looking at your, your specific organs of your body here for sure. Venus being in Scorpio, which is the sign of... Um, the reproductive organs, you could be looking at reproductive organs and, the, and health in that area. But um, Scorpio is also a very private energy. So you could be looking at your health, you could be healing in some ways, something like that, you could just be going back over. Now at the level of work, one of the things that comes up for me as I look at Venus retrograde for you is that you could be looking at the value you place on work. Venus is about value, your esteem, um, talents that maybe you have that you've been sitting on and you haven't been using? Do you value the career you have? Do you like the money you're making? You know, do you like the job that you're doing? Things like that come up. And one of the really big things for me with you over this next six weeks is looking at your self-esteem around work, your self-esteem around your health. And if you've been struggling with that, this is an energy to help you heal. No matter what has happened in any capacity, um, this energy is showing you that there's still value in what you're going through so that as we come out of the retrograde, you can bring it forward, okay? Now, on the 9th, we've got a new moon, excuse me, yeah, on the 9th, we've got a new moon happening in Libra. This is going to light up your fifth house space. Now, whenever we're dealing with a new moon, we're going to plant these seeds of intention to begin something new. We want a fresh start here, right? We want to go forward in a different direction, something new to grow. But in the sign of Libra, we're looking for balance. We're looking for partnership. So a great question at this new moon is to look around your fifth house area, which is the house of true love right? Um, it's the house of conception. It's the house of children, of joy, of self-expression, of play, of hobbies, of sports, investment, any of these kind of joyful, expressive things. Where do you need to reestablish your equilibrium? Where are you out of balance? Libra wants those scales in balance. So Gemini, look around. You know, have you been having a weird relationship with your kids or something like that? Have you been having a weird relationship in a relationship or did a relationship recently end and you're having to find your own voice again. Whatever it is at this new moon, the best way to use it and to be productive and maybe to start something new is to see what's out of balance right now so that you can bring it in balance and move it forward. So this is also a great new moon for beginning something new. It is the house of conception and conception is not always about babies. It could be a new business, a new business idea, um, a new club, a new group, a new something with your children, whatever it is, your voice has the opportunity to come out and be of, for, and about you with this particular new moon. 
Now on the 10th, we've got Mercury moving into Scorpio. Scorpio is going to be a busy sign for you this month. Well, for all of us, but it's going to be a busy sign, busy sixth house for you. With Mercury here in Scorpio, while Venus is also in Scorpio here, the sixth house energy of Mercury here, you're flipped backwards, but your mind is forwards. So you can be reflective. You can honestly think about what's happening in this sixth house area for you. Not only that, if you're needing to handle things, if you're needing to have conversation with coworkers, have conversations with healthcare providers, something like that, Mercury helps you have rational decision making, accurate conversation, and it also makes you a phenomenal observer of what's going on. Mercury is very savvy. It's looking for patterns. If you're trying to figure out how to um, improve your schedule or your daily routine or you're trying to figure out how to improve your health, what's going on, what's, what's happening here. Maybe it's time to get pen to paper and what happens when you eat these things. Track those foods, right? Let's see in the details because Mercury is about the details. It's your ruling planet. Work with that energy. What are in the details of what's going on so that we can adjust and bring equilibrium to this track, okay? Now, when we get to the 23rd, we've got the sun moving into Scorpio as well. So just heating up the party, heating up the party. The, see, this is the thing. Where the sun goes is where you're going to want to shine. You want to be seen. You want to express yourself. You want to be known for something, right? You want change because this is light heat, life, and vitality. So in your sixth house this month, whether it be the career, the health, the um, daily routine, even if it is down to, like I said, coworkers or things, if you're freelance, if you're a freelance person, um, you're going to be making some adjustments here because you want to be seen. You want this area of your life to be vital and to be healthy. So you're making positive changes here. So that's absolutely gorgeous. Now, on the 24th of the month, we have got a full moon happening in Taurus, which first and foremost, what I want to say about this is it's happening in your 12th house, and this is the shadow space, right? The house of closure, endings, transition, and you have been in transition, and you will begin to complete that transition here at this particular full moon, because at the full moon, something has to be ended acknowledged or adjusted so you're going to hit shift here but one of the things that i think of is let's work with the energy of the sign that we're in as well where do you need to be more grounded where do you need grounding where do you need some more staying power are you working on something behind the scenes right do you have a spiritual awakening that is on the agenda and you've been digging through some things you've been getting really honest about some things so that you can bring about that change one of the other things that i do think of in the 12th house here is um, secret lovers if there have been secret lovers secret affairs secret even secret enemies on the table some of those will come to the light because a big old full moon is going to bring something to the light. Also, you know, and that can sound a little bit scary. It doesn't need to. You know, it's just life happening out there, you guys. Um, this could be hidden dreams, hidden talents, hidden desires that you've had. Whatever it is that's been lurking and hiding in that co kind of quieter sector, the truth is going to set you free. That's what it is about. And sometimes the truth is, yeah, I'm actually built to do this or I have this skill. And other times the truth is, is yes, I've been engaged or holding on to a person that is unavailable or they've been holding on to me, whatever that happens to look like. But there is a spiritual awakening available over the next four weeks that brings you current and into the truth of what's going on for you from the shadow space, okay? Now, as we get to the October 20, the October 26th, October 26th, we're going to have the Sun and Venus in a conjunction because see, they're both in Scorpio, but it doesn't mean that they were together. But now they're going to be together and the height of their energy is right here. And this is important to understand because what this energy is going to bring for you is new social relationships, which is a phenomenal energy because around this sixth house, whether it be, like I said, the health, the wellness, the job, if you're freelance, any of those things, you need new energy and new life breathed into this area of your chart, right? So having these new social relationships is key. But then on October 31st, Mercury takes that move into Sagittarius, into your opposite energy. So this lights up the seventh house and Mercury in Sagittarius gets very open-minded. And what you're open-minded about here, what you're welcoming about, what you're savvy about is new relationships, new contacts,
contacts, right? You want to move forward. Gemini, your life has changed significantly this year. And if you're not going to sit here in this rut, you've got to have new relationships. You've got to be able to ask new questions. you got to have new mentors. you got to have new health in that um, existing relationship to move you forward. You've got to come out of the narrow thinking, and we all get into it. Even the most open-minded of us, we get used to our situation, we get used to our routine, and yours is disrupted this month, and we have to move forward. So this is a wonderfully open-minded energy for you to bring new life in from these new social groups, likely, that have come into your life. It's also just very good in one-on-one -on -one relationships for having some great conversation. Also on the 31st, we've got Venus retrograde still going to move out of Libra and move into the sign or moving out of Scorpio and moving into the sign of Libra. So starting to work on that retrograde looking at your fifth house. And we will talk so much more about that as we get into November. All right, Geminis, I think it's going to be a good month. Please keep me posted on these changes that are happening because your daily routine, the routines that you knew, you're going to need to do some things differently, but they're going to bring new life. They're going to bring new social energy to your life as well so that these people, places, and things can help you get done what you need to get done to bring this equilibrium I was talking about this month, okay? All right, like this video, comment, share, subscribe. Don't forget to take advantage of the 2018 holiday gift. I will see you in the weekly videos and I will definitely see you in the November monthlies as well. I love you guys so much. Have a great month. Bye.